Hello, this is Jason T. Ingram. You might remember me better as Fake Zappa. I am doing a series about self-advocacy, and I'm calling it Referral Madness. I have came up with this idea about seven years ago when I was on the newsletter committee and a, and a contributor for a mental health nonprofit, and I wrote an article that was like, I think it was three to six times longer than what they could act actually publish. And so I tried to do it in parts and then they stopped publishing my stuff because it was way too lengthy. There is so much to talk about when it comes to advocating for yourself. In this particular situation, it's because I live with um, a series of mental disorders that has made me uh, not able to work for over 10 years. I've been on disability for eight years and uh, Medicare and Medicare supplements and all that kind of stuff. And I have really been good over the years at learning how to get my needs met because that's one thing you really have to be good at when you're living on a fixed income or welfare or any kind of support like that. So this is a continuation of kind of more of a, an ongoing process that I'm doing as like a kind of a big art project is sort of like putting a lot of the things about my life and the kind of struggles I go through and the kind of interests and just some of the weird shit I do on a daily basis and uh, doing ongoing documentary projects. So, I am filming them at different times and places, and these are going to be 15 minutes, I think. So, uh, they'll be a little longer than last time, and uh, tonight is 1 o'clock in the morning on the 19th of April 2017. And um, I took my night pills, I think it was about a half an hour ago, so I'm really getting sleepy right now. <laughs> and so, I'm also kind of nervous because I'm going to be starting some of these self-advocacy things. This is actually the first session that I could ever remember having in 10 years of going to a mental health nonprofit and having somebody sit down with me and actually do something with me. I know it sounds crazy, but everybody here, especially living in Portland, Oregon, and all these educated folks, and some of the trends now that are going on in mental health do have a couple of side effects. I get advice and more advice, and then I get training and then I get more advice, and then I get one-on-one -on -one advice, <laughs> and then, then I get offered money, and I'm alone in my house, and I can't work. That's what I'm trying to do, is trying to work with my disabilities, not just trying to work and then fail, and then work and then fail, like I do every single time in the last 10 years, and that's what vocational rehabilitation should be doing. So, I'm going to be um, documenting the different agencies and organizations and companies that I'm going to. I consider them my providers is what I call that. And then the peers are the other people like me who are living on disability, mostly for mental health issues. And tomorrow, which is, well, today technically, I have two appointments, which is crazy because I've been trying to get with these two agencies for over two months. And this one particular one, I did miss two appointments. And in my defense, I was really fucking sick. I couldn't hardly leave the house sometimes for three or four days at a time, and it was horrible. Um, I was getting out about every other day now lately. Sometimes I have to get out of the house and stay out of the house because of what I've been going through lately. So part of this process is, is documenting my illness and how it's progressing or how it's healing in different ways, along with trying to do what I consider 
my purpose in life, or whatever you call it. It's what gives life meaning to me. It makes life worth living. And I can't have that because I'm too sick, and I can't do all this stuff alone. And I think it makes sense that if other disabilities are honored in that same way in other industries, that I think with the industry that I work in and the illness that I have, I'm wondering what could be out there. So, yay, I got some new hope um, because uh, I watched Star Wars 4. No, I'm just kidding. I only stay Star Wars 4 to piss off all my Star Wars fans. And I also um, do really feel a kind of a weird hope because it's sort of like this, I'm not asking for help anymore. I'm kind of asking people to ask for help. But that's kind of what networking is. So I'm taking some different approaches. And I'm taking some different approaches in my delivery. And I try to have some urgency without being manipulative. I try to have this balance of... Well, I'm a Libra. I'm all about fucking balance. <laughs> so, anyways, it's going to be a great series, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, could very well be as lengthy as my last one. But it's great. I get a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but I mean enough feedback to know where I'm hitting some topics that some people might want to hear about. And there's also a lot of video logs about mental illness, and there's not as, as many men as I was hoping to see, uh, at least on the ones that come up in my suggested videos and stuff. It's always like there's a video about depression, and there's another woman, there's another woman, there's another one. There might be a man in there somewhere. So, hi, I'm another dude in there somewhere. And <laughs> I have some other things I'm working on too and tonight was really a blessing because um, I belong to a handful of communities and this one community that I've been getting pretty close to the last couple of years um, is really making me question whether I really feel safe to pursue asking for help or am I going to get the same kinds of things I get from every other nonprofit that I've been getting. And it's the worst possible thing you could do to somebody, especially uh, mentally ill people. We have a lot of uh, issues of people disappearing and fading away and stuff like that. And when you live in an intellectual community like Portland area, where you have a lot of people that are very strong intellectually, but in a lot of other ways, like as far as their character and their backbone, they're very weak. And they just have such a hard time being honest. I mean, they know how to be tactful and they know how to be nice, but there are times that arise frequently, especially when you have clashing people. When you got someone like me that... I, chances are I'm going to push somebody's buttons, uh, maybe everybody's buttons. <laughs> there has to be clear com communication, and it is essential. And I rarely, rarely get that. And so I get the runaround, and then I get the disappearing act, and then I get the endless cycle of endless referrals is what I call it. And I will be coming up with some more new terms as we take this wonderful and horrible and ridiculous journey together because the sick get too sick to find a doctor. And when you're too sick to find a doctor, that's when you need a doctor the most. And when somebody does not have a disease that is visible, and if they have a disease that makes other people feel unpleasant, then it is a very lonely and tedious journey. And there are things that are these kind of quick fix, easy answers and blanket answers. And I'm going to go through some of that too, because I'm going to compare the 12 years that I spent in uh, born-again Bible Christianity throughout my 20s and early 30s and identifying with that culture for 20 years of my life, having come into that world from my artsy-fartsy progressive world, adapting to that culture, embracing it, and then coming back out into where I grew up 
And so it's interesting to be able to see the far left and the far right, political, religious left, a political, religious right, whatever you want to call it, from both perspectives, seeing from an outsider's perspective and an insider's perspective. And I'm coming to these conclusions that there are so many similarities and we have so much to learn from either side. And I really think that what's going on in the political stuff here, which is just the most epic clusterfuck I could ever dream up to ever experience in my lifetime. And so what we're having is this sort of microcosm of the Trump world, which is, in my opinion, very much in favor of um, the elite, and there's so much greed involved in it. And of course, I'm a, I'm a liberal, openly gay, well, I'm closeted, but I'm open about being closeted, and I am open about smoking pot, and just being a general weird fucked up artist kind of makes me a liberal. But I like to make fun of us too because I think we got us into this mess just about as much as the, the right got us into this mess. What's difficult about navigating through a community that is very much in the far left and politics, and we don't have a lot of religion, but I call this part of the country the buckle of the unchurched belt, because uh, I used to live in Tulsa, and there's some places around the South that love to claim that they are the buckle of the Bible belt. And when you have a culture that swings so far to one direction, you are going to be able to see what extremes do with that particular ideology. When you are looking for flaws in your system, the best people to ask are the ones that are of very little influence. And people that are of very little influence, for instance, you know, uh, homeless and sex trade workers and substance abusers or whatever, uh, you know, and then you know, mentally ill people are pretty close to theirs. So one of the things I've been learning is that, you know, I have a gift. <laughs> and that gift is being kind of on the, towards the bottom of a lot of the social pecking order. And I'm looking up and sometimes I feel like I'm waiting for the crumbs to fall from the table. Just please, please, just call me back or do something substantial. <laughs> and... <clears throat> There's this chasm between the providers and the peers. And it's so hard to break through that. So this is an experiment, and I could either succeed or fail. And I hope that it can encourage other people to be able to do the same and to not give up and to also know that there are some places around the world where it's easier and it's more difficult, and there are some situations you might be in that would have a whole different dynamic. So this portion is sponsored by Weather's Original Sugar-Free Chewy Caramels. I get these at the dollar store. And there are some things that I do that are half harmful <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> I am really looking forward to finding ways to ask for help that is going to make people accountable without pissing people off or overpowering them or making them feel threatened. That's one of the things I want to do, because referral madness can make you want to pull your hair out. It can make you paranoid of the system, it can make you resentful, and it can make you hate authority. And um, advocating for yourself can do more harm than good sometimes. So it's good to be prepared and to know what you're getting into. So hey, whatever you're advocating for, hopefully it's for somebody else, which is awesome. Wonderful good luck to you. 
and be blessed.